Hello everyone, Sir Monkey Shot Zappy here, back again with Game of Thrones. Right, this is it. This is the final episode of the entire show, um, and we've only got a movie's length left. Um, so, back to what happened last episode. The episode in which I, I felt it. I, I felt the disappointment that people were saying was in the previous episodes. I mean, my whole thing was we need to wait and see how it finishes how the second half of the season goes before judging what happened in episode three um that was my that was my reasoning um and i give it the benefit of the doubt for that because you know 99 percent of people like people didn't give it that benefit of the doubt they basically just said all right this season's shy it's you ruined it i give it the benefit of the doubt until last episode um and you know that throughout the entire week there's been you know back and forth between people surprisingly a lot of people actually like that I saw actually thought that this was a um that the the show had, had made a comeback like you know they hated episode three but actually liked episode five like uh, you know it's st like still in the vast majority of people hate it but there were actually people out there that actually thought that this was that last episode was good I mean, I don't know. I, I I don't know how how they can take that. If you hate episode three, I don't know how you like this one. I I really don't because in episode three, <laughs> when that released, at least there was this these last few episodes to sort of figure out if killing the Night King was the right thing to do. Um, you know the the writing. I guess I, I don't know. I guess I suppose in the la in episode five that the writing for the episode as a whole wasn't bad if you kept it within that episode. But the fact is that you've had the previous seasons of building up these character arcs to, you know what I mean? It, it's called an arc for a reason. Generally, it's supposed to go like that, you know what I mean? It's supposed to gradually, you're supposed to gradually like change, over, change a character over time depending on what fucking obstacles they come across. And with um, <laughs> with some characters, the arc went from like season one, and it gradually went up, and then just, poof, and it came, it came down like a fucking sheer cliff wall. That's not an arc. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that is. like. You know, people arguing and stuff. I, I, I honestly, I still see it, and it annoys me because people don't understand. They people arguing that. Um, oh, like, you know what I mean? It, it was always foreshadowed that Daenerys was always, like, you know what I mean? She, she always had this within her to do it. And it's like, no, that's not the problem. That's not the problem. People are not angry at the fact that Daenerys is Mad Queen. They are angry at the fact that she turned Mad Queen in such a fucking quick amount of time. Like, the, the, the turnover was ridiculous. Shit all happening at once. It just, it wasn't, nah. That across episodes wasn't wasn't written well to get up to that point, you know. Um, and that even wasn't like you know the Mad Queen thing. Uh, I just uh, it, it's it's not that thing anyway surrounding that that annoys me because Daenerys to me, she was never that like she, she was never like up there with my favorite characters anyway, right? So whatever. But I guess for like the overarching story, it's what she does to the characters that I actually do like that are my favorite characters and what that means for them that i feel like it's ruined and it's predominantly it's jamie and cersei because i i don't know i, I don't know how you end those characters like that i i don't know it's so like it's just so not right for the characters it's just so not right at all i don't know how after what cersei has been through right that you make that that you give cersei the that you make people feel for Cersei in that in that regard. I, I that's not how she should be going out at all. That's not how it should should work. And everything with Jamie is pointless now because he's just reverted back to what he want, once was. And I, I he's my favorite character, and I fucked him. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Um, but you know, I've I've gotten everything out of the way. Um, I said at the end of last episode that uh, that with only 80 minutes left, you can't tie... There's not enough to tie everything together to fix what happened in the last episode. So, 
So, I mean, I, I don't expect many twists and turns, especially in the time that we have left, but with it only being a movie length. I mean, I know, like, in general, like, a movie that's, like, 90 minutes, a lot can happen. But I feel like in a, in a show, not a lot can happen. Um, so, like, I just feel like it's just John against Daenerys now. It has to be, right? I don't know. Because... Um, I don't see how John would like this. What's what's happened? I don't see that at all. Um, and yeah, so I I'm just gonna go into the episode, um, and just take it as is. Right, what's happened has happened. I just have to take it as is because obviously it's not gonna, it's not gonna change. So I'm just gonna go into it as is. I'm not gonna go into it looking f to be negative because I feel like th th there are f people out there that do that, you know. And it's ridiculous. Like, people should not be going into things just looking for things to bash. And I, there, there are, honestly, there are people out there. You see them on YouTube, like, the, the like the, the guys who are getting, like, loads of fucking views and whatnot talking about how shit it is, you know, and that's all it is. All they talk about is just the negative stuff. I, I don't believe, I, I, I think that's just a toxic, fucking horrible way to fucking be, to be honest. Like, that's just horrible behavior. Just to, just to go into something just looking to be negative about it. It's like, you know what I mean? Because then, you know, if you go into something looking at it, only trying to find the bad in something, you're never going to see the positives in it anyway. You know what I mean? And that just, you know, they talk with other negative people and that's all they do. You know what I mean? All they want to do is hear, that, hear like, people that think just like them and then by them talking negatively, it just creates, like, a fucking circular whirlpool of just absolute negativity and it's just fucking just not a fun place to be. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've seen like shit like that, and it's just like ugh, I can't be bothered with this pe with these people. But you know what I mean? Like, uh, I get criticism. Like, you know, what I mean, criticism's fine, but I think you just take the take the the good with the bad. If there's good in there, you point them out, right? You you take it as is. You take what's good out of it. You take what's bad out of it, and you criticize it based on that. You don't just go into it negative, negative, negative for everything, you know. But um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. You know, I've I've got my pre discussion thing out of the way i'm going into the last episode just just going to take it as is and at the end you'll get my final thoughts on everything as a whole all right so without further ado um yeah if you want to see my um full length reaction to uh this and the, the previous episodes of uh season eight and you can do uh link is in the description to my patreon and it's the full length tier it's ten dollars a month if you want to see my full reactions to anything okay so there's that but uh, yeah there's nothing really else to get uh to talk about and stuff like that so we're going to get into this final episode and see what we get so without further ado let's go no one's going to be on our side like no one is the only one will be is Grey Worm. that's it as far as important characters go it's only going to be Grey Worm. It's over. These men are prisoners. It is not over until the Queen's enemies are defeated. How much more defeated do you want them to be? They're on their knees. They are no greedy. shit. They might be going into the dungeons. See if, it, if he can find out what... Uh... Yeah. And just to think, if they just stood over there, they'd still be alive. There wasn't any rubble over there. Oh. <laughs> That was a cool shot. It looked like the shot had like wings like a dragon there. Shaka Regis and Han Regis and Dali. There's no fucking people left! In Rapa Tolvio Vio Vinondirat. Well by killing them all. Tolvio Prigelat. Is that what you're gonna do? You freed your brother. You committed treason. I freed my brother. You slaughtered a city. <laughs> Which one's worse? <laughs> oh fuck. Have your fucking hand of the queen back. Come on, John. Oh, fucking hell, she got there. <laughs> Jesus. Wait for me outside the city gates. I'll come find you. John. She knows who you are. Honestly, at this point. At this point, it would I wouldn't be surprised if Daenerys just wants to kill John. Did you bring any wine? <laughs> no. 
Uh, well, shit. <laughs> Barris was right. I was wrong. Our queen's nature is fire and blood. You think our house words are stamped on our bodies when we're born, and that's who we are? Ah, then I'd be fire and blood too. My father was an evil man. My sister was an evil woman. Pile up all the bodies of all the people they ever killed. Yeah, it's not. There still won't be half as many as our beautiful queen slaughtered in a single day. I'm sick of John trying to justify this. You won't say because you don't want to betray her. Everywhere she goes, evil men die and we cheer her for it. Love is the death of duty. Sometimes, duty is the death of love. That's a cool, cool soundtrack. It's like the main theme, but a cappella operatic. I saw them executing Lannister prisoners in the street. They said they were acting on your orders. It was necessary. Necessary? Have you been down there? Have you seen children? Little children burned! She used their innocence as a weapon against me. She didn't Tyrion. burn them. Forgive him. You can forgive all of them. Make them see they made a mistake. Make them understand. He's trying to change our mind. He's trying to change it, like revert her back to what she was before. Because he doesn't want to do what he has to do. How do you know it'll be good? Because I know what is good. What about everyone else? They don't get to choose. You are my queen. John does No. And always. He fucking killed her. He killed her. He knew he had to do it. Yeah. Oh. John. That is a very like. Don't even. Burn the throne! Burn the throne! Yes! It's melting down! I knew this was gonna happen! I said! It's not gonna end with the throne! Oh. Dragonstone, maybe? I don't know where he's taking her. Holy fuck! Okay, Bran, Sansa, Brienne's here. Some of you may be quick to forgive. The Ironborn are not. I swore to follow Daenerys Targaryen. You swore to follow a tyrant. She freed us from a tyrant. So Let the Unsullied then. give him what he deserves. Say another word about killing my brother and I'll cut your throat. Friends, oh, please. Fuck. Jon Snow cannot go free. It's not for you to decide. Do I not hear to speak? His fate is for our king to decide. We don't have a king or queen. He's the rightful heir. You're the most powerful people in Westeros. Choose one. Ah, oh, could easily be Sansa. Holy fuck. I like to think my experience has led to some small skill in statecraft. And oh, understand. <laughs> Please sit. <laughs> oh my god, end me up, man. They're like, nah, they ain't gonna happen. Old the town? decision about what's Mrs. best for everyone should be left to well, everyone. Democracy. This is what it is, isn't it? I fucking figured. <laughs> I'll ask my horse. <laughs> I've had nothing to do but think these past few weeks. It could be space Sansa, I guess, about right? A bloody history. Although it might be Bran. He might say Bran, because he's been talking to him a bit, hasn't he? But we've never got to see what he was he talking about. People. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. And who has a better story? Bran. Than Bran the Broken. He actually fucking said Bran. He's not gonna take he it though. He'll never walk again. So he learned to fly. He is our memory. The keeper of all our stories. Who better to lead us into the future? From now on, rulers will not be born. They will be chosen. chosen. On this spot are the lords and ladies of Westeros. Yeah. If we choose you, will you wear the crown? Why do you think I came all this way? You already knew. You already knew! I. 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 <laughs> Fucking Robin Aaron. He doesn't, even, doesn't even know, man. I. I. I love you, little brother. 
I always will be She's a good, good king. The she North is. will remain an independent kingdom, as it was for thousands of years. Okay. All hail and the broken. Lord Tyrion. You will be my hand. Yes! Mm. Mm. I was wondering who would grace. I cannot. Yes, I can. I'm the king, bitch. I'm the king. <laughs> this man is a criminal. He deserves justice. He just got it. He's going to spend the rest of his life fixing them. Oh, shit. If you knew to the Unsullied, we would start a war. Letting you walk free would start a war. So our new king has chosen to send you to the Night's Watch. Ha <laughs> ha. Fuck. The North is free, thanks to you. But they lost their king. Let Stark's daughter will speak for them. Come, come see me, you know. My castle will like... I'm not going back north. What's west of Westeros? Storm West. You have your needle? Right here. <laughs> I'm sorry I wasn't there when you needed me. You were exactly where you were supposed to be. Everything was supposed to happen like it did. It's just going to write about Jamie. Because all the King's Guard and Queen's Guard get their thing, right? They get written about, but Jamie didn't have anything. And <laughs> just keep going. Died in the arms of the woman he loved, maybe. Die protecting his. Uh, Davos? He's got to be on it, yeah. Aha! Yes! What's this? A song of ice and fire. Archmaester Ebro's history of the wars following the death of King Robert. Sir Podrick. Yeah! No, oh, I can't even remember the king's gone! <laughs> Would you say the crown's debt to you has been paid? In full, my lord, huh? Alright. Good. The Master of Coin looks forward to helping the Master of Ships, but first he has to ensure we're not wasting coin, or soon there won't be no more coin. Anymore. You master of grammar now, too. Grandmaster! <laughs> Pat his fucking head! Pat his head! Please! Oh my god. Oh yes! Yes, Goosty! Oh, thank fuck. Alright, you got his head scratched. I'm happy about that. Queen of the North! That was the first shot of the... of the show. Is he leaving the wall? He's gonna be king beyond the wall. <laughs> that's what it looks like. It looks like he's leaving. He's not even. Fuck, that's it. I've got nothing left. Right? Okay. So, that was the finale of Game of Thrones, the entire series. Um. And when I said before about, you know, before I started watching, like, the actual, the episode, I said that I was going to go into it just as is, right? Things, the things that have happened have happened. I can't, I can't change them. So there's no point in going into it just feeling um, annoyed and raging at what had happened in the last episode. You know what I mean? So I just took it as it is, and then we just carry on from, from there. What can they do to wrap it up in the final episode? Um, and for everything up until... 
pretty much everything up until the cut happened and they flash forward like i don't know how, how how many like how much time was flash forwarded basically it was after danny had died and drogon had flew away and then when they came up to like the the almost like the the meeting of the lords in the dragon's pit as soon as it came up to the meeting of the lords in the dragon's pit from there on throughout the episode i think as of what had happened was good i i thought like everything that could have happened happened the way that i wanted to and i i didn't see a problem with it after that point um the problem is that i will get out like out of the way just right now you know what i mean because i don't want to dwell on any on, on the negatives as is because i think the entire show doesn't merit being talked bad about just because of the last season i i i, I don't believe that i think you know the the positives outweigh the negatives you can't just judge the whole fucking show just by how it ended you know what i mean it still doesn't take away from the fact that it's one of the best shows that has ever been made um regardless of how it ended um so just to get out of the way it was def it was the problem is it was rushed at the end that's the problem that that is absolutely 100 percent the problem it was absolutely rushed so that there was no time for you to to feel anything um at the end, I, I feel like I should have been tearing up. I should have been, but I wasn't because because it didn't allow you to to feel those things. Uh, I said that at the end of the last episode. Was like when 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 J when Jamie died, I should I should have been crying <laughs> for that character more than any other character in the entire show that has ever died because he was my favorite character <laughs> and. And and they 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 ruined that ending. They really did. For what had happened in this like in the last episode and the previous episode, like few few of the basically what happened in this season, this episode written as a whole after Danny dying and, and that, like I said at the beginning at the Dragon Pit and then onwards. I think for what had happened previously, they wrote they wrote everything that I think could have happened that was perfect for that point. For everything that happened previously because other than that you can't really do anything I, I it was just that it was rushed the seasons were rushed um you know there, there's been that whole thing about how hbo offered them you know multiple like more full-length seasons um in the money to do so but day and day wanted to like, they just wanted to have you know minimal episodes and just squeeze it all in at the end and um and honestly, I, I think in their mind, they were just like, I think they were just done with it. They, they couldn't handle, the, they couldn't handle the job that they were assigned to because, because the bar was set so high. I, I've, you know, I've said in the previous episodes and whatnot that they were set an impossible task after um after they finished like after they got to the point where the where the books finished they were set an impossible task because those books take years upon years upon years to write um and in that time that that's how you get that quality writing because it takes those like that amount of time with a tv show that is supposed to be airing every year and then in this case it's still it's two years but it's still it, that is still a short amount of time compared to writing the books. They were given essentially an impossible task to meet the standards of of, of seasons like one through four. So I, I, you know, watching season five and seeing, you know, how obviously the quality had dropped and whatnot. I I personally was expecting as such, and I don't. Th I I think a lot of people weren't. I think in their head they didn't they didn't consider the fact that this was the case. They didn't consider the fact that the books had ended and therefore quality would drop. They were expecting, you know, because I think in, in in everybody's minds, when you come up to the finale of something, you expect that at that point, it's a crescendo effect, okay? At the, at the end of something, that's where everything goes down. And therefore, you subconsciously expect it to be the highest quality of the, of, of the, of the entire thing, previous of what happened before. 
But because of the way that Game of Thrones had worked and that, you know, they got through to seasons four, season five was a was a fucking was like I said, it's I guess uh, writing wise you can probably you can probably say that season eight's actually the worst one now. But season five was a bit of a pain to get through and I I've said in my previous videos that like season five's the you know, I don't I don't like like well, I say it's like the, it's the worst season of the lot. I don't. It's not that I don't like it because I like the bits that were in it that I liked, but there was a lot of it that was just not good at all. But after they got past the books, at that point, it's like you're you're fighting an uphill battle all the way, and and because it is working in the opposite direction as opposed to what you would normally expect coming up to the finale, that's where everything is supposed to be better than what happened beforehand. Because it was clear that it, they didn't have books to go off that they they would the quality of writing would never be up there with seasons one through four so i you know i i expected it going in i just before the season had started i was just telling myself like i, I just want the the if characters are good like the end of their arcs i just want the characters arcs to be justified for the stuff that they do in the previous seasons so there was obviously some things that didn't um that being said, I'll get on to the positives um, because I don't want to dwell on the on the negatives too much. I'll come back and forth between them through this like post discussion because th there is a lot to talk about. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think we'll we'll just go through my 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 notes and whatnot. So yeah, the, the John and Grey Worm thing never really subsided up until the end, and and you know, and up until the like end of at least Grey Worm's life, he'll always hold that sort of grudge in his head, whatever. Um, you know, Grey Worm just, you know, following his, you know, I, I don't, I don't blame Grey Worm at all. Um, he lost the only woman that he'd ever loved, right, to that, to Cersei, right, in a brutal way. Um, and at the end of the day before that, he was in Sullied, all he did was follow orders. And even though technically he's supposed to be under that, like, sort of free, you know, he's free to fight for Daenerys, right? Um... It's still that thing of like she liberated us, she allowed this to happen. She's seen Daenerys through all the good times, and because I think in the Unsullied's heads, because everything has been the worst of the worst before Daenerys came along, that when they see King's Landing getting sacked and innocent people dying, they don't see it as bad. They don't see that as as an evil act, like going out and and just and destroying like innocent lives and stuff. Because before, like they've been they've been through shit so i don't blame gray worm or the unsullied a bit for the shit like for the reason like i'm talking mainly about gray worm because the unsullied are just like the other unsullied are just nameless people that are just going to follow orders regardless doesn't matter right uh but gray worm I, I understand that the sort of position that he was in right so i don't have any you know i don't blame him. um we had Tyrion go into the uh the dungeons where um I guess the basement where all the skulls of the dragons were kept and whatnot, and found Jamie and Cersei. And I noticed that it was only that side of the fucking place that was. Th if they just, if they just went over to the fucking right where there wasn't any rubble, they could have, could have survived. Um, so yeah, that um, uh, again, it should have been a time when I was tearing up, but I wasn't. Um, Grey Worm somehow got ahead of John, because I thought it was all. I don't think there was any like cuts in time really between when John moved past the the Lannister men that were getting executed, right, and going straight for Daenerys. So I don't know how Grey Worm got there ahead. I can only assume it must must have been a cut, and John did something else before going to Daenerys. But I don't know why he would have. I that was just maybe a little inconsistency that I did pick up on anyway. Um, yeah, Daenerys basically she's lost. She lost it. This like she's clearly lost it. She, her eyes are completely fogged over, and what what she's doing, she doesn't see is bad. Um, she calls the idea of killing everybody in King's Landing liberating. It's like, who did you liberate? I, who's left? You know, like all we get to see is the remains of people, and then the armies. You don't see the innocents. So you've got to assume. I mean, uh, let's let's be honest. I I don't think every single person in King's Landing innocent died, but we didn't see them. You know, I, I 
it's just a fucking massacre, man. And and she, she her calling it liberating, just pissing me off. Um, yeah, Tyrion obviously just going up, basically throwing the. Fu it's just like yeah, it's like yeah, I did release my brother, and you killed, like a million people, a million innocent people. I said it during the reaction. It's like yeah, well, who's, which one was worse then? You know what I mean? It's like. And I just love it. he just fucking takes off. He's just like, fuck you. Chucks it away. I don't know how they did it. They, they managed to, in the space of a couple episodes, make Daenerys the most hated character in Game of Thrones. Over Cersei. That should not be the case. But whatever, it happened. Um, I'll get to it. Uh, yeah, so um, the John and Tyrion talk. I liked uh, this right. So the John and, and Tyrion talk was the bit before Danny died. The the part that I actually liked, um, you know, because like I said, it was after Danny had died, and then it got to the dragon pit, and then beyond that, where I was like, I thought everything was was tied up well after that, yeah. But before that, the John and Tyrion talk was the bit that I liked because I I love those moments in Game of Thrones where you get two characters. To, generally, they they're the most well. Like the 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 greatest moments of Game of Thrones, to me, um, is when you have two characters that are just talking about what they should do and what needs to happen, and those those generally end up being like the, some of the greatest scenes. Like you had that you know Varys and Littlefinger when they had those uh, those talks together, like some of the best stuff, um, you know. So I I did really like the John and Tyrion talk, even though I was tell like John was. I mean, I guess I get it. The, the The only problem is, is that, like I said before, it was rushed, so that you, you don't you don't see the ultimate change of John becoming like that that way inclined. I mean, I guess that what what he's doing is he's fighting against his honourable pledge, the pledge in, in in his oath to you're my queen. So I guess there's that, but still, it's like oh, fuck's sake, it's just like come on, um, because the last thing I wanted in my head before he killed Daenerys. In my head, the last thing I was thinking was, if he truly is going to be so beholding to this oath that it's going to take another thing to get him to kill her, then I don't want that to happen. I don't want there to be a case where Daenerys kills Tyrion, or Daenerys has to kill Arya because Arya tried to kill her, and then that's what makes him turn. I didn't want that, because I, 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 he needed to see... Uh, that's all it took. That's all I think that it needed to take for, for Jon to realise that what Daenerys was doing was horrible was the fucking this complete sack of King's Landing and killing all those innocent people. Um, that being said, I liked the fact that when Jon eventually did get to Daenerys, I did like that bit. That, that scene between them is nice, even though it is rushed. Because you can see, you could see, like, that scene happening if they give the seasons more t more episodes and more time to, to flesh this out and and build it up you know like that scene could have been so tragic because i i don't think that the right thing to do would have been to turn daenerys and make her the bad guy but not on like like not like that because you're at a point where people just don't like daenerys now and they're just like oh fuck you like you should it shouldn't be that way what you should have done is caused her to be the Mad Queen and, be, and make it tragic so that you're like, oh, fuck, like, I get the reason why she did it, but, like, ugh, th this has to happen for the good of the rest. Like, that's how it should have been. It shouldn't have just been, like, just fucking kill our man. It shouldn't have been like that. Um, but that's how, that's how it ended. But, uh, like I said, yeah, that, that, that scene between John and Danny, where John is, like, he's, he's essentially pleading in a way. It's like, just, you know what I mean? Like, forgive Tyrion, you know what I mean? Like change change what you're doing now. It's like he's trying to change her attitude, revert her back to what she was before all of the like all of this fucking, you know, before Missandei died and and Rhaegal died and and back to what it was, you know? And he and she is like, "Nah, like you join me." And and he, he knows at that point that all right, I can't then. I can't. And then he has to kill her. Um So, you know what I mean? I and that's that's the thing that I think is so torn about these last couple episodes. Because I mean, no matter how like what you feel about episode five, 
like I said, to me, that was the disappointing. That was the most disappointing episode of of the series for me, because I'd realised at that point that that was when there were characters that had died that that deserved better, like deserved to go out better. Um, but yeah, regardless of what you say about those, like the cast, like their fucking their acting is is so great. They are fucking. You know what I mean? It's like some of the, some of these actors, like this is the first gig. Like this is the first fucking show and you've seen them grow up since the very, when they first started, you know what I mean? Season one. And you know what I mean? Like the, the like bits that they, they were acting, like, you know what I mean? Like you would never call it like, you know, the best acting in the world. Specifically, you know what I mean? Danny was like that. Sansa was like that. But like they've, they've come around so much. Like, you know what I mean? Like to the point where they, they are really good. Like Danny is like, um, Amelia Clark, she she's, you know what I mean. For what she was given, you know what I mean. Because let's 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 face it, it's not that it's not the actor's fault, is it? It's not the actors and actresses' fault. The way that the show was written and rushed, you know what I mean. So they can only act what they're given, and you know that there, there are obviously videos out there where they're clearly not happy with the way that it ended. You know what I mean, and rightfully so. Um. Because yes, this show did deserve an ending as good as as good as the rest of the show was. Um, but you know their acting is is tremendous, um, especially in this season. You know what I mean with what the what they were given. Um, uh, but but yeah, it's like it's the these character deaths and you know the end of these characters should be something that is the most felt. You know, like you're talking about what you felt after the Red Wedding and after the death of Ned Stark. You know what I mean? The death of Oberyn, like. The, the end of these characters should be something that's so fucking somber, like so heartbreaking. You know what I mean? That it that it justifies the end of their character, and it, and it and it's not like that is the biggest insult I think to the viewer is that you you see the end of these characters and you don't even shed a tear. The last one I did was was Theon, because I think that his arc from beginning to end, now with the, now at the end of it all. I can say that the person who had the best arc overall is Theon. It was originally Jamie until they changed that. And 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 Jamie just reverted back to, to going with Cersei. Like and, and and then they died by the, the keep falling on them. Like And now now it's Theon, you know? Um but I think Theon he got he got what like he wanted. He wanted to like I'm not going to say like you just said, yeah, like oh, he wanted to die. You know what I mean? But he wanted, to, if he was going to die, he would want to do it by going out and 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 fighting for what he considers his home, which is Winterfell. You know what I mean? And and I I feel for that character. You know what I mean? And and that was the last one I had. Granted, it's not that long in the in the you know the time of it. I know there are a lot of people out there just like, oh, it's stupid and stuff. But I, I think Theon got the most poetic death. I think him going... I, 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 along with Jorah as well. Because uh, J- Jorah, he went out exactly how he wanted to go out if he was going to, right? Is protecting Daenerys. But then, what happened to Daenerys afterwards? It's like, fuck! It's like Jorah did all that and, and he, like... Thank God Jorah never got to see what, what had happened here. Because I don't know... I don't, I don't know how Jorah's character would have worked in this capacity I, I don't know what he would have done i mean i guess you could make the argument that if jorah was alive that danny would have never done this i mean i guess the argument is that danny went down this route because she lost everyone that she cared about i mean the only person that she had left at the end was was Tyrion, and she didn't even trust him really you know so there's that it's just yeah um but yeah, the acting is so spectacular about everything. Like, as little as fucking... Honestly, right, wait a minute. Well, we'll get that at the end. Right, so... John kills Danny. Yeah, I, um... I figured. I figured that would be the case. I didn't know if it was going to be at that exact moment when jo- when John and, and Danny were, like, kissing. Um, because I thought it was, like... At that moment, it was John inside of his head going, all right, I need to, f- I need to figure out how I'm going to be able to do this. But no, he, st- he just went up and no hesitation, just did it anyway. So, yeah... Um, Drogon came back, and I was wondering, like, how is how is he going to take it? I, I, I think it was probably the. <laughs> you see, here's the problem: is that now you don't like they they didn't end Drogon. Like they didn't 
close the chapter on Drogon. And because this is the end, it's like, that's all you get. It's like, Drogon went east. That's it. Even Bronn could have, like, cut the thingy off, because I guess they just didn't know what how to end that thing. Other than Bran saying, oh, maybe I can find him. I don't know what that does. I, that doesn't really do much. Drogon's got no, Drogon's got nobody to look out for him now. So he's just going to go on a rampage. You know what I mean? Like... I don't know. I, I, like, a free dragon not being, you know, like, it just doing whatever it wants, that's not good. That's not good. That's just going to go out. Drogon's going to go out and fucking demolish places and eat fucking innocent people and, you know what I mean? I guess the, I guess the end is supposed to be the idea that Bran's like, maybe we can find him and then deal with him then. I don't know. Um... So yeah, but, that but yeah, Drogon melted the throne anyway, which I, I thought was going to happen. In my head, I I, I knew, um, you know, I, I've said that this is this isn't going to end with just it's not going to end as simple as somebody sitting on the Iron Throne. I will admit, at the end of last episode, I was like, fuck it, it might actually. It's like it might just end up being as simple as John killing Danny and then sitting on the Iron Throne. But beforehand and everything like that, I in my head, I was like, it's not going to be that way. It's not going to be as easy as that because it has to be somebody else, and it's not going to be as simple as a, as a, um, you know, as just a straight up monarchy and how it would usually be picked. And now it's like it's like a democracy; people vote for the leader that they want, and that's how it works. Um, I don't know how long that would last. Something tells me, just because of the way things are, that Game of Thrones is almost supposed to be like the, it's like the present in the story that's being told. Because I'm I'm sure, you know, th this is basically the. The furthest in the future that George R. R. Martin's story is, right? There's nothing past Game of Thrones at the end of this point, right? There's nothing in the... Like, he hasn't written anything that, that took place in the future of this or anything like that, right? So, I guess you could probably say this, I guess, maybe as, like, because of this system that's now in place, we're all right now, and there's not going to be any fucking real wars or anything like that. Um... But who knows? Who, who fucking knows? Um, so yeah, I, I figured it would be some kind of democracy in, 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 in some way. Um, and a lot of other people speculated that as well. It's like, because at the end of the day, it ends up being that poetic sort of thing where it's like this whole, the, the whole show is literally called Game of Thrones. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like the fight for the Iron Throne. And in the end, it just would be poetic if at the end, the throne just burns and no one sits on it. And that's how it is. Um... I mean, Bran's got his own throne now. He's got his wheelchair, so the wheelchair throne. <laughs> a throne on wheels. <laughs> it's a wheel throne. That's what it is. Um, so yeah, um, and then they, and then you know, we get past that. Um, oh yeah, I, you know what? I'll 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 mention it just because we're not going to come back to it. But Drogon, there was that obviously thing of like, well, John is a Targaryen. And Drogon does accept him as one. You know what I mean? He doesn't. He doesn't like. He doesn't essentially snarl at John because he is a Targaryen. He accepts him because he is one, and he knows that. So he, you know, he lets him buy him whatever. Um, I feel like he was a guard dog. He was there to make sure no one else got in, and um, so he wasn't expecting John to just literally kill Danny. So he let him in, um, and uh, and yeah. But there, there was that thing up in the air as if like Danny dies, does Drogon stick with John? Or not, and it, it turns out that he didn't. Uh, now I think that's the best way to go about it. You know, thinking about it, I think it makes sense because Drogon. Well, first of all, he, he's named after Drogo, right? He's named after Carl Drogo, which Dr Drogo didn't have any affiliation with John in any way whatsoever. And just because of the fact that Danny is actually, you know, considered their mother, th th that would make sense. If it was Rhaegal at the end, then I could possibly say it, you know. But I think because it is Drogon and, and there's no affiliation between Drogo and John that that Drogon wouldn't be, you know what I mean? Dro Drogon was Danny's dragon, so it makes sense that that, that would happen. Um. Uh. But yeah. So, I I do like the fact that Drogon didn't kill John. If that had happened, I'd be like, fuck, this is, <laughs> you know what I mean? But. It didn't happen because he, 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 he couldn't. He, had, he has the, bl the blood of Targaryen in him, you know, so. Even though he knew, I, I would love to know, like, I don't know how they would do it, you know what I mean? Because dragons don't speak, but dragons are supposed to be intelligent in this universe. They're supposed to be so intelligent that they are, they are um, 
I don't know exactly how, but they are intelligent. So I would love to know exactly how far along Drogon is. I think because Drogon, like dragons don't really, they don't have that sort of mortal, um, you know, hu mortal, because they are mortal. That, that's a sort of like human empathy sort of thing going on where, you know what I mean? They don't care what they destroy, right? So I just, I would love to know at what point, like, would he, un would Drogon understand I don't think it was that complicated, though. I think the only reason why he didn't kill him was because he was the last Targaryen, or he was a Targaryen. I think that's, that's all it is. I, I don't think it's a case of, like, oh, he had to do it, therefore, you know what I mean, I can't kill him for it. You know, I don't think it's that. But, uh, but yeah, whatever. Um, so, yeah, he flies away, flies away with Danny, Right, and then we get the, the Dragon Pit sort of council meeting. And, this, and from this point on, I'm trying to think. I, I don't think there was a moment where I was like, oh, fuck this. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, because... I, I don't know. I mean, I I guess there's that. To be on right, okay. I think there's something to be said about Bran just knowing the future and how things are supposed to pan out. Uh, you know, I think maybe it's a bit too much. Like him being able to see like you know memories from the past, um, and things going on right now is one thing. And it's not even a case of like oh like I can see everything that's going on at any time. It's like it's not even that. But like him having to know where to go, like like what to look for. And that's how he finds it, you know what I mean? Or it just comes in, like, random things. Um, and that's, like, a way to sort of limit his power. But when, I guess, like, I guess when he knows that, like, everything's happening the way that it's, like, supposed to and stuff. Uh, I don't know. Because it's not really confirmed that he knows the future. More, I mean, I, I don't know. Because I... The way that like you set up the the Night King dying feels like he does know the future because it's like oh it was all supposed to happen he's obviously coming for me and by him coming for me oh yeah I can sneak in and kill him you know what I mean but like him knowing that he would come become king eventually is I don't know I guess that's the only thing post like Dragon Pit that I can really like sort of you know get is like all right I don't like that but you know. I don't entirely like it, but it, it, it is what it is. I mean, because of the fact that he was the one there that didn't want to be king, so it makes sense. They've they've had that where it's like, you know, oh, John doesn't want to be king. Have you ever thought that the person who doesn't want to be king will make the best one? You know what I mean? So it makes sense, you know. Um, so, yeah, Ty Tyrion chose him. Um, I fucking called that, by the way. You know what I mean? I was thinking, like, you know, he's had this thing with Sansa... And, you know, before, um, I've said that, you know what I mean, it would probably make sense Sansa being the one in the, in the end to get her the Iron Throne because she's the one that's always wanted to be in that position. Um, and her journey has been a long and hard one, you know what I mean? So for her to sit on the Iron Throne at the end would make sense, I think. Um, but, but yeah, it ended up being Bran. Um, that was, like, obviously... Not obviously, like literally, like it was a throwaway comment almost when I was like, "Well, maybe it could be Bran," because he's he's Tyrion's talked to him like three times in season eight, and we've never seen anything past like a few sentences. And I was wondering, like, okay, I, like, was there any need to even have these like little scenes, other than I guess if he was going to choose them then? So I guess it makes sense in the end. Uh, but yeah, so everyone chose him. Edmir, by the way, <laughs> like no one ever gives Edmir like the chance. Like they just think of him as like, yeah, you're just, you're not worthy, man. You're you're useless. Even fucking Robin Aaron, like <laughs> Robin Aaron. I can't believe he's there. Fuck. That's, it looks so different now. Like you know what I mean? He still just he still looks like that fucking kid. That's just so. You know what I mean? He's just he's a, he's like worse than Edmir, really, isn't he? He's like he he's the he's supposed to be king of the Vale, not king, lord. All right. Lord Paramount or whatever of the of the veil, and it's like fucking hell. Like I don't know how he does a job. You know what I mean? He just seems just so like unreliable. Um, I guess they have Lord, Lord Royce there though, fucking uh, doing the shit. But uh, I guess we'll I guess we just don't know though. Um. I do like the almost symbolism as well of everyone standing up for the king and obviously Bran 
not being able to and him the only one sitting i think that's some that's like a, just sort of like a nice symbolism there um so yeah they obviously they put john back in like put him in prison because i guess he just came out and said that he killed daenerys i did say like during the reaction that it wouldn't surprise me if he just came out and just admitted it because he is that kind of guy and he did so they put him in put him in prison and they were thinking about like obviously what to do with them and that's how obviously it came about to the sort of to, like you know that we'll vote for a king then and uh, he gets his aside um so yeah they, they had to come to obviously an agreement of just like all right well you know what i mean like we we're not gonna let you kill him uh and he and you know the unsullied and whatnot are not gonna let him just go free so send him to the night's watch now because of how that ended, and it, John base, it looked like John was leaving the wall to go north. It w it wasn't a thing of like, oh, we're going north on a on a on a ranging mission because we're ran like no, rangers. It looked like he took the wildlands and left the wall to go live in the real north. <laughs> That's what it looked like. So in my head, I'm thinking because the unsullied. And I'm guessing by extension the Dothraki, even though we didn't have like a representative of theirs to like confirm or anything like that, that they have only heard of what the Night's Watch is, and therefore, like Tyrion or somebody came up with the plans, like oh no, just send them to the Night's Watch, knowing that there there is no need for a Night's Watch anymore. So by like by extension, by them agreeing to him going to the Night's Watch is sort of in, like you know eternal like you know it's like a prison sentence but like you know you're, you're forced to do this sort of job if they knew that there's no longer any need for a night's watch because there's no night's king anything like that he's like john's on side with the wildlands the wildlands have no reason to to go and uh get across the wall and pillage the northern villages and stuff that he he's uh, john is essentially a free man now so i wonder if like Tyrion, i'm i'm, I'm guessing it has to be Tyrion that came up with this idea that he, he did that knowing that john wouldn't be serving a sentence at the Night's Watch, but that he would be free to do whatever the hell he wanted, or, like, uh, beyond the wall. You know? I love that trio, by the way. Fucking Tormund and Ghost. Oh my god! Ghost got a fucking... I love it. I love it. Uh, finally! Thank fuck! <laughs> but that's the thing that I'm most excited for, is Ghost getting his fucking... getting pad. Thank fuck. <sighs> that was great. Um, so yeah but John going back to the Night's Watch full circle kind of thing right back to fucking basically episode 2 right um, back to the, the, yeah, the first two episodes him going back to the Night's Watch but it, it, again like there's no need for it there wasn't anything at the, at the end where it's like I don't know for whatever reason you go up north and it's like Oh, but there's another Night's King just waiting, you know? It's nothing like that. So, as far as we're concerned, the end of the show, everything is fine right now. Everything's great, you know what I mean? There's no, there's no, like, ancient fucking evil zombie monsters up north. I mean, you've got to assume that throughout those whole, like, all of those seasons, that it, is there anyone else north that, allow, that was allowed to live? Fens, anything like that? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure the John John and the Wildlands can handle it though, you know. Um, so yeah, uh, and then the Unsullied were shown uh, they were leaving for North. So yeah, I mean, makes sense. The Unsullied don't have any reason to be on Westeros anymore. Danny's gone, so it doesn't matter. Um, and yeah, they're leaving for North, where Missandei was from. Like Grey Worm said, he was going to. Of course, he'll be going there without Missandei at this point. Um, and I'm guessing the Dothraki are just going back across. I guess they have to, right? They'll they'll just have to go back across the narrow sea and go back into the uh, in their source. I'd imagine. I don't because I don't see them going with the Unsullied. You know what I mean? I, I don't see that happening. Um, and I don't think the the uh, the king and, and not all the other lords would allow the Dothraki to just go free into Westeros because you know what they'll do. They'll just go back to the, what like to what they normally do, which is pillaging and raping villages and stuff. They're not going to allow that. So they're probably about across the Narrow Sea. Um, so yeah, Arya basically explaining that she's going west. Uh, where, I can't remember the fucking name of the woman, but there was a woman who decided that she was going to go west and see what was there, and she never returned. So 
I don't know. There, there's multiple theories. One of the theories is that she's actually Quaith somehow because you know, by you know, but basically with the rule of our world is that if you just go west, eventually you'll come back around to the east. You know what I mean? And you'll you'll just do a loop. So you know that there's theories that that would just happen and you would just come. It, I think it would be a very small world, though, right? Right? If you if you went west of Rest, Westeros and you immediately hit the the uh, east side of Essos, <laughs> you know that would be. That will be a small planet, but um, but I don't know. I mean, so if I is ever going to come back, we have no idea. We have no fucking clue. Um, I mean, it does, doesn't matter because this is the end of the show anyway. So we're not going to get any. We're not going to get any, anything past this, really, are we? So never know. It's just left open ended. Um, Brienne writing about Jamie. I, this was something I thought was going to happen. Because it was, um, this was set up, oh, fuck, what was the, I can't even remember, remember what season it was. I'm sure Jamie was looking at it, though, and, and basically, because this is where they explained the idea of, like, all oh, the King's Guard get uh, written about in the in, in the book, you know what I mean, about their exploits and things like that, you know. And, and the thing is about Jamie because he was known as Kingsley, I was like, that was the only thing that was in his book, and it's like, oh, it's tragic, isn't it? But it's nice that Brienne got her, you know, because she is now officially a, a king's guard, and Podrick is as well. Fucking get in! I love that. I love that end for Podrick. That's great. Um, that you know she's able to write about Jamie and, and and multiple pages as well. So that's nice. And the um the last thing that she wrote down, um, I love the fact that she was trying to think about the last thing to basically say, um, and it finishes off his legacy basically by. You see that 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 is a good thing. That's full circle. Is that Tywin always used to say that it's it's legacy that matters. You know what I mean? It's you know you live your life and then you know hopefully your life goes beyond after your death and people remember you for what you've done. And that you know the fact that Jamie gets his is is great. I love the fact that he gets you know what I mean he, for the the bad end that he did get. <laughs> you know, actually character wise, at least Brienne got like to. To write about him and and sort of send him off being an honourable man at the end of the day, you know, died protecting his queen. No details as to what had happened around that time, so you can only assume that you know what I mean. He was honourable until the very end, you know. I, I love the fact that that you didn't need any more details to write. Brienne obviously knowing that and putting aside like her sort of heartbreak for that is is nice. Um. And that's what that that basically goes with what I said before about how like what had happened, considering what like the the sort of bad writing and the rushed ending that had happened in the previous episodes. That at this point in like the sort of the very like where we're tying up all of the all of the endings and stuff to all of these arcs, that I think it was written nicely at the end. You know, I I think that the endings tie together nicely, and and that was one of them. Like. I like the idea of... You see, I always knew Jamie was going to die. I, I knew he was. I just wanted it to be the right way. And then, regardless of what had happened, it would be like... Brienne would end up writing his sort of... You know, his his legacy to, to continue on, you know? And him being honourable at the end. And that's how I thought it was going to go out. And it did go out in that way, but... Jamie's actual, actual character didn't, didn't go out the way that I wanted. Um... So yeah, and then we got a good look at the Council of King's Island. So yeah, Tyrion was there in the Hand of the King's here. I was like, there's got to be a council though, right? And I was like, fuck, Bronn's there? Isn't he, isn't he supposed to get High Garden? And then they, they showed up. So you have, yeah, so Bronn, he's there. He did end up getting um, uh, High Garden. And now he's uh, Lord Paramount of the Reach, um, which, is, uh, which, is, which is great. He's Master of Coin as well. So, you know, he's, he's got access to all of that. Davos, Master of Ships, of course, that's obviously the best thing that he could have done. Um, I think perfect fucking, uh, perfect profession for Davos. Um, and then you've got um, Grandmaster Sam, so he's now the Grandmaster at uh, at King's Landing. He's not the, I think that's, a, that, that's I think that's perfect. You know what I mean? I, I don't, because obviously Sam was never going to be Archmaester of the fucking citadel, you know what I mean? Because why the maces are fine, you know what I mean? They don't get involved in anything. They're fine over there. They're not going to just ex ex like change the establishment just because of this. So I think where Sam ended up is is um, is perfect. 
Um, and then uh, Brienne will be the captain of the Kingsguard, right? Got to be because she's on the uh, she's on the council, so she's got to be captain of the Kingsguard. And then uh, and then and then Podrick, of course, being being a member of the Kingsguard. I'm, I'm happy for Podrick. I like it. Um, yeah, we also got Gendry as well. So he he's he looks good in his fucking outfit. All we saw, he didn't say anything really. He just he was just there. He just said I right when he was agreeing to Bran. Um, but he looks good. Looks good, and he's sort of uh, he's sort he's get up, you know. Looks like a true fucking true Baratheon. So that, that's nice. Um, and yeah, and and then and then we come up to the end. So it's just it's just basically finishing off everything. Uh, I did say during the reaction that it is a heavy stark finish. Um, one of the things I was wondering throughout the show is like, what's bittersweet? <laughs> because they kept saying that that was how it was going to end. It was going to end bittersweet, and I don't know where the bitter part come into it really, other than I guess maybe just the fact that they're splitting up and the Starks may never see each other again, maybe. But then it's like, well, I, you know, I. Uh, If you want to care for the characters more, then yeah, maybe that would end up being bitter, you know. But in a show where it's just like we have built up for so long, and and we have been, you know, uh, you know, characters that have made you know silly decisions have end up fucking them over, and you know, again like Red Wedding and and Ned Stark and and things like that. It's like you would think in a show like this that it wouldn't end so nicely, you know. Like I was look, I was watching the show. And everything past Danny dying, like, felt sweet. Like a sweet ending. So, I don't know. It wasn't bitter to me. But, you know, maybe it is for some, for other people. But I, I don't get the bitter part. The only bitter that I have is, like, that the, uh, the ending to some characters weren't as good as I thought they were going to be. But... Never mind. Um, so yeah, yeah. Other than that, I, 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 I haven't got anything. I've, I, that's all I've gotten written down. So, as the show as a whole, um, I, it, it's, it's one of the best shows that television's ever had. There's no doubt about that. Like, regardless of how you feel about, um, you know, the this season. Um, even the last two seasons because there were people out there that didn't like season 7 though it wasn't obviously as tiered as what this season was but you know regardless of that it's still one of the best TV shows that has ever graced our television screens um, that's just, just, just a fact it just is what it is uh, they've managed to do something with this show that is unprecedented ever um, you know like the, just the scale of it and managed to put it on the screen. Uh, they said that the, you know, when George was writing it, he was like, "I want to make something that's unadaptable." <laughs> you know what I mean? And they adapted it, and they did it fucking well. They did for the fucking size of it. You know what I mean? It, it's crazy, and the shit they were able to do, like, you know, they weren't given as much of a budget as some t as some movies do over the course of ninety minutes, and yet it still looks better than a lot of movies. You know, so. You gotta give them fucking credit for it because they've they've pulled out something that that is un. It's it's crazy. Um, so I'll give them all the credit in the world for like making the best visual fucking TV show that's ever fucking been ever. You know what I mean? Um, writing wise, the first four seasons are practically like just untouchable in terms of in terms of storytelling. Um, in the great fucking. You know what I mean? Like, it's so, like the character interactions of those seasons are so fucking good. Kate, of course, see, yes, season five had like you know a sort of downturn, but the, you know there, there was still times hard home, still one of the best episodes of television ever. Um, you know, season six was was fucking season six was good. I, you know what I mean? Season six was good, um, and you know people might forget that season six, but that was beyond the books. So they had the capabilities to do it. Like I said, the the problem was they they did rush it at the end because they were trying to get past it i don't know if if in their mind they were thinking like oh like we're never going to be able to do it justice so fuck it and we'll just do what we can and just try and make it epic and that's it um i don't know but they should have 
stretch it out longer. Um, and had season seven and season eight be ten episodes each, each, you know, at least. Um, but they didn't decide to do that. So this is what we've been given. Um, you know, I think that there are going to be people, there are going to be channels out there that are just going to rant and tell everyone how shit it is. And how, oh my god, like, this is so funny how shit it is. It's just like, have a break. Have a fucking break. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't, I, 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 I don't get it. I really don't. And then the, the thing, the thing that people will say is just like, oh, it's because I was invested so much in it that it annoys me that they fucked it up so much. Like, you've, you've had weeks upon weeks of this, you know, uh, like, it's not an excuse. I was invested. I've, I've been invested in the show fucking just as much. You know what I mean? And and I'm able to just take it with a pinch of salt, knowing that the writing was never going to be on par. Um, and we got what we got. You've still got the books to come. So if you're a book reader, there you go. You can enjoy that. Um, or not. But at the end of the day, I think... There has to be, you know, you, you have to take things with, you know, you have to take the good with the bad and the people that just go out there and say, no, everything's bad, everything sucks. Uh, I just wouldn't take that opinion too seriously, to be honest, because there are good things that, that have come out of this season, regardless of what you think about it, you know, it, it just is, you know what I mean? But just speaking from a, a point of just being, being mature about something, you know, I, I, I can't like stress enough over the, the the course of this past week. Even even episode like the week after episode three wasn't as bad as, as this week, you know, <laughs> which I should get because obviously it, it was episode five that did sort of turn my perspective a bit. But still, even after that, like I'm able to take the good out of that sort of that episode, uh, you know, take the take the positives and talk about them a bit. The people that go out there and just talk negatively and that's all they fucking do and they look for the bad and everything. Like, honestly, I can't be bothered with those people, man. They're so fucking... Honestly, it's just... It's tiring <laughs> just listening to those people. You know what I mean? Like, they literally bring down everything. You know what I mean? It doesn't even... Come, it, it, it Because they do it so much, it becomes less about the show and just more about the general... Like, the general state of everything. So all of a sudden you just become negative about everything that's happening, like even regardless of the show, um, which isn't a healthy fucking attitude to have. Um, so yeah, fuck those people. Uh, to, you know, take it with a fucking pinch of salt. If you don't like that, that's absolutely fine. Take it. Constructive criticism. Of course, it's not as good. Everyone, everyone knows it's not as good as fucking the the previous seasons. We know that. You know, you don't have to fucking beat it, beat it in everyone. That, like, oh, you know exactly why, and we need to laugh about how shit it is. You don't. You take it as is. Um, be mature about it. Because at the end of the day, the show as a whole, regardless of how the last season went, the show as a whole is a fucking fantastic show. It really fucking is. It's done something no other show has ever been able to do, and I think it deserves the plaudits for that. I don't think you should um, shit all over a show that is... Because yeah, it's not fucking... It's not going to be... I mean, well, actually, <laughs> what am I saying? I think people are so petty enough that they're going to determine how good a show is because of how the ending went. Even though you shouldn't. You shouldn't. But, yeah, it is what it is. I think... From going into the episode as, as I did, I was happy with the way that everything turned out because of how it could have. You know, I think as an ending, it could have been a lot worse. Um... The season, season, this season as a whole, underwhelming, definitely, definitely underwhelming, um, and it doesn't, it deserves a much better ending, it does, but you just have to take it as what you got, that's the, that's all you can do, so, you know, like, <laughs> petitions aren't going to save it, petitioning about re rewriting it, it's, it's just not going to happen, it's not going to happen, if it does, I'll be shocked. And I'll be, I might be happy <laughs> just to see like what changes, and I, you know I'll I would definitely fucking watch them, but it's just not gonna happen. Um. So so yeah, you gotta take it as is. 
But the series as a whole is one of those, it, it, it's a show that, one of the best that's ever been created. So I take it as that. Um, and I just, I, I, I just want to tell everyone, just, you know, take it as is. Don't be one of those people that are go that just want to go out and look to be negative about it and, and, you know, just, you know, anything that, like, I would fuck, I would challenge you, actually. Like, anyone that makes videos just, like, that just goes out there and just, why Game of Thrones Season 8 is so shit? It's like, we fucking know, mate. We know. The only reason you're creating that video, right, is to get views, right? And, and, and that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's not a case of you actually ranting about how bad it is. Sure, that's what the video content is all about, but you're just making it just to be negative. And come on, guys. It's not a fucking healthy attitude to have. I think the internet as a whole has had this sort of, like, truly fucking culture around it that do tend to just be this way. And honestly, I don't like it. Uh, I think it's fucking disgusting so you know uh, i i hope you guys agree you know i hope the people that do watch this agree and if you're one of those people come on change 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 how you fucking feel about things because thinking about things that just like just to be negative about things is just, it's unhealthy and it's just not nice nobody fucking nobody likes you so you know you're not anything clever by doing that you know what i mean be the mature one understand it is what it is you can dislike it that's absolutely fine you can be constructive about it but as soon as you start thinking everything's fucking this is so shit and i just want to go talk about how shit it is with other people you're, you're immature you're immature you, you don't have a fucking you know you need to have a positive attitude about things but you can be constructive you know you can be constructive about the negatives that's how that's how you you know you 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 keep a clear head, but you have to have a bit of both. You can't just be overly positive and you can't just be overly negative. You gotta find a middle ground. So that is that. But um, but yeah, I it, it's been a fucking an incredible journey. This this whole TV show, you know what I mean? Like I said, I am I obviously haven't reacted to the previous seasons. Like this was the only season I got to react to. So you know I got it at the end, but I have that video about the previous seasons up anyway. So if you do want to hear my thoughts on all of that, and then you can do, you know. But, um, but, you know, as a whole, it's still a, a fantastic show. Um, and I'm happy it did come about. All right. Regardless of how it ended. Even my favorite character, Jamie. <laughs> Fuck's sake. And Cersei. She didn't get the, she didn't get the end she deserved. I think that's what I'll end off with. I think, um, you know, just as much as, as Jamie needed to go out to fulfill his arc, possibly killing Cersei, you know? Like, uh, that's how it needed to be done. Um, but just as much Cersei needed to... She couldn't... She The way she went out was so underwhelming. Like, she... you, She went out people feeling for her. And the audience shouldn't be doing that. Shouldn't be feeling for her. Should, there should be, like, Oh my God, you died! Yes! Like, and I don't think that's how it happened. You know what I mean? Like, the, the hatred for Danny doing what she was doing just over overthrew everything else and then you just didn't care about the character's deaths or anything like that so but it doesn't matter on a positive note the show is still one of the best of all time so that's how i'm gonna end it okay so yeah so thank you everyone for watching if you don't want to discuss anything regarding game of thrones anything like that then you can do um it's probably better off you discuss it in my discord so that the link will be down there but um but yeah that is all so thank you everyone for watching uh, in the description below along with my discord like i said uh, i have a patreon so if you want to support me on patreon that'd be very much appreciated there's a bunch of different tiers and rewards depending on how much you want to support me with early access five dollars a month gives you access to shows a week early you also get four episodes of hunter hunt every week uh ten dollars a month that was the full length that gives you access to my full length library everything i react to gets a full length including game of thrones uh exclusive tier that gives you access to a bonus show i'm currently reacting to which is seven deadly sins so if you want to see my reaction to that you can do there elite tier fifty dollars Every time you pay $50, you get a choice of a show that you want me to react to, and I will react to it. It will go at the back of the list, find about seven shows. Might take me a while to get round to it, but I will do it eventually. But if you don't want to wait that long and you want your show to be reacted to next, then you want to get God Tier, which is $100. Uh, but that is all. So thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.